Well, they say you can't win them all, and I'm afraid our first brisket cooked on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe might be falling into the brisket fail camp. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and while I suspect this brisket is headed towards the fail camp, we have not yet tasted it. So you're gonna find out exactly when I find out if it is in fact what I think is a brisket fail. But before we get to our taste test, let me take you back in time and tell you how I plan to approach this cook the first brisket I've done on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe, what I think maybe went wrong in terms of how this cook went off the rails, what I've done to try and save it, and we'll get to find out at the end whether or not any of those last ditch Hail Mary efforts have saved this brisket or not, as well as the information that I'm gonna take from today's cook into any future cooks I do on the Kamado Joe Pellet Joe. Okay, so the brisket that I picked up this week, there was only one left. It's almost 10 pounds less than the one I did last weekend on the brand new Kettle Joe by Kamado. And so picked the best one I could find, but sometimes Costco is getting thin on supply. And so this one was about 14 pounds that I was going to use for a low and slow cook. And so the game plan here, I thought since it's a smaller brisket, it would be an even better opportunity to try it on the Pellet Joe. A couple reasons. One. I'm pretty sure that 23 pound brisket wasn't gonna fit, especially since this uh, 14 pounder was taking up a pretty good amount of grid space. The other reason I thought it would be great is it would showcase the low and slow potential of the pellet joe. Holding 220 degrees, 225, which is what we set this up for, is really, really difficult on a traditional Kamado. You can do it with some practice and knowing your vent settings, but it, it can go wrong in the middle of the night. You can get temperature spiking up, you get your fire going out, and you wake up to maybe a cold grill and a brisket that you've got to throw out. Not wanting to worry about any of that, I picked the Pellet Joe for today's cook, as it would just take away all the guesswork. So. To fire it up, I just went ahead and removed any leftover ash that we had from our previous cook, loaded it up with pellets, as many as I could get in there. And so I'm using hickory pellets for today's smoke session, try and get as much smoke profile on this brisket as we can. Turn the dial to our smoke setting. I started off in the middle position, which is 250 degrees, and later landed at 225 degrees before putting on our brisket. As again, I wanted to take advantage of those really, really, really low and slow capabilities of the pellet joe. So we got our hopper full, our joe warmed up, our brisket ready to go, all trimmed and seasoned. And around 11 o'clock last night, I threw on the brisket and thought, all right, we're off to the races. I can go to bed and not have to worry about a thing. So what happened? So when I came down this morning, the brisket had been on for about nine hours. So I wanted to go ahead and take a look at our pellet supply. We're still doing you know, pretty well here in terms of how full I had the hopper. I think we get about 10, 11 hours of burn time on the amount of pellets that I had loaded into our pellet joe. So that was the first thing I looked at. Thought, okay, that's pretty good. We still have some pellets. The next thing I took a look at is the brisket itself. And so just looking at it, it looked pretty good. I was seeing some dark spots, so it made me think, you know, we're definitely needing to wrap this. So I went ahead and grabbed a temperature probe and to my surprise, did not like what we were seeing on the dials. I was seeing everything where I probed the flat, which was tough as nails, even to the point, well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And I was nowhere close to getting that nice, you know, room temperature butter feel that you want to get when you're probing your brisket. So even before I could get the camera out and explain everything, we just went into sort of emergency response mode to try and CPR this brisket. And so even though I think it was overdone, you know, since we're seeing over 200 degrees, I likely missed my tenderness mark and it's now just starting to dry out. I wanted to go ahead and wrap it right away to try and you know, get any of that extra moisture that may come out of this brisket retained in the foil and hopefully through a longer than normal rest, you know, retain some of that in our final presentation. Uh, the other thing that I did, I just ran out to the store and picked up some beef broth. 
and I wait, later went ahead and just drizzled some of that on top of our brisket. And I wanted to do that because when I looked at the bottom of the brisket, it was getting very, very dark, very, very firm. And so I think if we didn't soften that up and we went to slice, we're just gonna end up tearing and we're gonna have a pile of shredded beef rather than slices coming from our brisket flat. So I gave that about 45 minutes or so in foil with the beef broth in the bottom. And when I checked for tenderness later on, things had improved, not great, category, but things had improved enough. I wanted to go ahead and just call that our cook. And so this brisket came off the grill just shortly after 10 this morning. So it was a total 11 hour cook and it has been wrapped in foil. I double wrapped it again so there's no leaking kept it fat side up, which is the direction that we cooked. So we can try and maintain some of that bark versus it getting soggy in our foil and then double wrapped it with towels and put it in the cooler. And so if anything, I'm really curious to see how our cooler has held up because that has been from 10 o'clock this morning till now dinner, 5 p.m that we are getting ready to open this out of the cooler. And so I still have my temperature gauge handy and we can go ahead and see what temperature our brisket is at after hanging out in the cooler for you know nearly seven hours or so. But before we slice into that brisket, which is our next course of action, what went wrong here with this brisket? And so first thing, when I'm looking at the bottom and it is dark as all can be, it suggests a couple of things. One, you know, we're too close to our fire. And that definitely is a limitation of the Pellet Joe versus the Series 3. The Series 3 is four inches taller and you gain that four inches away from your firebox. It's not identical, but the Pellet Joe is more similar to the Kamado Joe Classic 2 in size than it is the 3, which is why things like the Slow Roller won't fit or the three-tier Divide and Conquer rack won't fit uh, because you just don't have that clearance in the dome. And so I think sitting a little bit closer to our fire could be one of the problems. The other thing I wanted to go ahead and check is maybe we're off on temperature. I look at the iCommand app and unless I'm not figuring out where that is, I don't see a data log to see what's going on. And I'm getting pretty accurate readings between the iCommand and the dome itself, but the dome was reading more like 250. And so this is something after I got the brisket off and we did our CPR, I went ahead and threw on two of my Inkbird BBQ 4T probes so we could do some logging for a couple hours. And I think this has found the culprit for our potential brisket fail here. So there's a couple things that I'm noticing. One is unlike the Kamado Joe Classic with the slow roller where I have seen a front and back of grill temperature range within one degree Fahrenheit, sometimes a little bit more, but often if you've got your dome heat soaked, it's within a degree or two. It was very, very, very tight. Whereas with the firebox towards the rear of the Pellet Joe, I was seeing a five to 10 plus degree difference between the front side of the grill and the back side of the grill where it was a little bit hotter. I suspected that would be that way, which is why when we dropped our brisket on, I put the point end towards the back where that firebox was. The other thing that I saw, and I think is behind our potential brisket fail here, is despite being set for 225 degrees, the grill hardly spends any time at all at 225 degrees. And looking at the chart spikes, we touched 225 degrees before shooting back up, sometimes as high as 300. And so despite wanting to do this cook low and slow, I think we realistically average more of a hot and fast. If you had to sort of draw a line and say, where did we spend most of the time after a couple hours of data logging? It was more like the 260 to 270 degree range on average with peaks up to about 300 degrees, very little time spent at that 225 degrees. And so if I knew we'd be at 270 degrees, I would have adjusted how I set up for this cook in terms of the time that I put it on so that I would be awake and ready to wrap it and not potentially overdo that bottom. But since I thought we would have a nice low and slow brisket that would be ready and waiting for me at the perfect wrap window when I woke up, 
this is one of the key reasons I think this brisket is not going to turn out exactly how we hoped. And so with that in mind, and I'm so glad that I took the opportunity now to get some data logging, is I know we run hot. Now this looks like something that'll be uh, potentially solved with firmware updates. I've noticed on my iCommand, which is Komodo Joe's fan unit that I have for the classic, and I can also use it on my Big Joe, is with firmware updates, my lines have gone from very, very spiky to nearly as good as what I can hold myself. And I'm hoping that the same thing happens here with the Komodo Joe, Pellet Joe. But right now, this is 50 degree swings that looks more like amateur happy hour, first time cooking, controlling the temperature than it does a really, really clever algorithm that should be able to hold temperatures within a tight, tight range. Anyways, that's what has gone on over the night and into today and what I think is behind, sadly, not going to be our best effort brisket. But let me bring the camera close, we'll get it out, we'll slice it up and we'll try a few pieces and see if this is as bad as I think it might be or if there's some redeeming qualities, especially towards the point end where I think we still have something that we can work with for dinner. Mm, it feels tight, not terrible, but it does feel a little tight. I'm hoping Franklin apparently rests his briskets 11 hours and so I'm hoping there's some magic in that long rest time that our seven hours in the cooler versus normally two hours might have some redeeming qualities for our brisket. Let's get it out take a look. So this has been in for seven hours. We're still steaming and seeing about 140 degrees. Oh, that's tight. <laughs> it's so tight. This is not going to be good. All right. We'll still slice it. That does not feel like butter. And can't even pick it up without falling apart. It's overdone. Smoke ring's good point end definitely has a little bit more promise than our flat. All right, I normally look forward to the taste test, but slicing that, I'm not so sure. There's a lot to look forward to. Let's go ahead, start with our flat, which is how you judge a brisket. Already not gonna judge this well. So I just it's just falling apart. Oops, probably better anyways. It's This is overdone, but let's go ahead and taste it. Reminds me of grandma's pot roast. That's positive. Let's try our point. Let's go ahead, get a bite of that. This is the least flavorful. I think the worst brisket I can remember cooking. Don't copy what I did here. This is not good. I picked a heck of a day to tell some friends, hey, we're gonna have a lot of brisket. Why don't you come over for dinner? Got to figure out what to do with this. Oh boy. Well, they were good friends. So are there things user error could have done to make today's brisket less of a fail? You know, absolutely. You know, if I was using the temperature probe and tracking the meat and had an alarm, you know, whenever that hit a 165, maybe three or four in the morning, based off of our temperatures being about 75 degrees higher than what I set them, absolutely could have intervened and done a little bit of earlier intervention to go ahead and try and save the tenderness and texture of our brisket. But also, you know, I think any time that our temperature is ranging 75 degrees Fahrenheit above what I set it at, this is just not how you're gonna get your best brisket result. The yo-yo, whether you're cooking on a classic or you're cooking on a pellet grill, is not a friend of low and slow meats where you want to have that nice gentle heat just wafting over them for a long period of time. The other thing I'm disappointed in here is just the taste, even if we overcooked it, which we did, this is way, way overcooked, is there is next to no smoke flavor on this compared to what we're used to. It's really washed out. Now, a little bit of the beef broth uh, would reduce that a touch, but not to the point that we're getting here, which is this is just 
you know, this is grandma's pot roast. This is not barbecue brisket. So we're gonna slather it with some sauce, throw it on some white bread and onions and try and salvage something of this. But as we open up today's video with a suspected fail, unfortunately confirmed 100% brisket fail. So this is normally the spot where I'd ask you to like today's video, but I think this one deserves the thumbs down. I, I know I'm gonna hit it. So whether it's a like or a thumbs down, this one totally deserves it. But I promise not all the cooks that we do like this will be this bad. So please subscribe to catch future videos. And again, like I said at the beginning, you can't win them all. I hope there's something that you learned through today's failure. For me, it's to learn every new grill, its nuances, how it performs. And I should have been tracking those probes ahead of time to know that we are getting spikes of 75 degrees above what we'd set it. So I could have adjusted our game plan. Now that we know that though, we're well equipped to go into future cooks to be able to better manage our temperature settings and hopefully, get a much, much better result. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you somehow enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.